can't take a heart that broken, make it over. Well, hello, friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters. Thank you for stopping by right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. Hey, I'm your host, Bishop, Brother Eddie Chaney, saying we love you and God loves you. Hey, remember, you can drop your prayer request off right there in the chat box. We print those out every night and pray over those before we leave the studio, my friends. Now, if you would like to have live prayer with me, feel free to call 1-931-248-0730 anytime, day or night. I consider it an honor and a privilege to pray with you and for you, my friend. Now remember, we are now airing live twice a day. Yes, that's right, Monday through Friday at 9.30 a.m. Central Time right here. Hey, and then we're back again in the evening at 7 p.m. Central Time. So be sure if you can to stop on by and let's just worship the Lord in spirit and truth together, my friends. Now, get ready as we pray that God continue to bless you and your family as you continue to be a blessing to others. Let's just join the regular scheduled program. God bless and thank you once again, my friends. To walk again But I Know a man Who Praise God and God bless you, my friends. Welcome into the Gospel Music Jude Box. Hey, we're going to be talking about, well, dead people don't sin, do they? I mean, think about it for a few moments because we're talking about have you died for Christ? Have you picked up your cross and are you following after him? That's the topic throughout the program today. Hey, remember, it won't let me share once again. I tried. I don't know if it worked or not. So if you can, just share the program and let your family and friends, co-workers, neighbors, yes, and even your enemies know what's going on. Hey, that God's not dead. He's alive and lives forevermore. Praise God. All right, guys, uh, give this a listen, and we'll be right back just in a jiffy. I mean, as fast as you can snap your finger. I Well, almost. I mean, it's almost like, well, try it once. See. I don't know. You reckon we can? <laughs> We're going to see if the Internet stays in tonight. So uh, let's just tell the devil we ain't got time for him. Amen. Praise God. We'll be right back. And I went right back to sleep Ain't got time for you, devil
and I've nothing now to fear. Satan, you have lost control, so get on out of here. I ain't got time for you, devil. Praise God. Let me say howdy to my daughter, Jessica Merle. Good to see you in the house tonight. Amen. Along with my lovely wife. Amen. God bless you both. Uh, The Lord loves you and we do too. Amen. Talking about dead people don't sin, do they? Well, I was asked a question today in my email from a Robert Tolley. He just simply asked, what did Jesus mean when he said, take up your cross and follow me? Well, you know, you can look over there in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, Mark 8, 34, and Luke 9, 23, and uh, you'll begin to grasp. But let me first talk about, uh, let's begin with, with me answering this with what Jesus didn't mean. Now look, many interpret cross as some burden they must carry in their lives. I mean, you know, like a uh, a strained relationship or a uh, thankless dead end job or a physical illness with the uh, you know self pity and pride. They say things like, uh, "That's my cross. I have to carry it." Such an interpretation is not what Jesus meant, my friends, when he said, "Take up your cross and follow after me." We're talking about tonight, throughout the program, dead people don't sin, do they? That's what the the topic is tonight. Hey, let me give a big shout out to Sister Shirley Collins there out of Pikeville, Kentuck. Yep, up there where they got a pump of the sunshine in. Hey, we love you, sis. Uh, May God continue to bless you and your family as you continue to be a blessing to others. She says, hi, you all. Amen. God bless. All right, we'll be right back. So get ready, get prepared as we break into the Word of God tonight, talking about Well, dead people. I mean, dead people don't sin, do they? Hmm, interesting. Well, 
Yeah, the church is on their knees and they're loading up the spiritual gun. Praise God. Let's just keep him in the phone booth, dialing 911. We got the devil on the run in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, before I break into the program, I got to deal with three emails I received. Hey, now some of you guys know as we do public radio, we're in the eyes of the public. I mean, they watch for us to make mistakes. And I got to tell you, uh, today my telephone made a mistake. I didn't, but my telephone... You know, I have to use that talk and speak because, man, I'm a one-finger typer, and it would take me forever. Boy, I was over there enjoying the program and House of Prayer Radio and finally got my computer where it would let me post in, in the chat room. And I was using that speak and talk on Google, you know, and I was uh, thanking them and, and just saying God bless them because they were all saying hello and God bless to me. And, man, it was a room full there, Brother Greg and Brother Irvin and, and uh, you know, the regular listeners. And, you know, I post you to post and the speak thing messed up and it said a dirty word with an n on it yeah it used god's name in vain those of you that know me know that i don't talk like that but anyway i didn't even see it my wife was in the room and she seen it and she come running in here and she said look what it done and i was like oh man if i delete it you know they done the enemy i'm not talking about my brothers and sisters now in the body of christ so you listen to me in the name of jesus i i never accused no one of gonna say that i did say or quoted a bad word i never said that i got enemies do you got enemies hey if you're obeying god you better believe you got an enemy and it's the devil and he's got legions of little angel demons running around Around, and they are just ecstatic waiting on you and I to make a mistake. Amen. So here I was. I seen where it done it. Now I, I prayed. I, if I delete it, they done and seen it. They're going to say that I said it and I got rid of it because I said it. And if I don't get rid of it, it's there. I tried to explain, trying to get that text and talk thing to cooperate with me. And uh, finally, I hope I got the point across. But already I got three negative reports from it. And they said, uh, you know, that they had heard that I handled talk like that before. And and now they had it in writing. So pray for me as I go forth to obey God and stand with that shield of faith darting off all those old fiery darts of the enemy. Because we know that, hey, when you stand up for the truth, you're going to be falsely persecuted. You're going to be lied on, made fun of, spit on. I'm talking about, look here, if you ain't been done wrong by the world, if you ain't been lied on, pushed down, knocked over, made fun of, talked about, hey, you're not where you need to be with God. 
That's a fact. But anyhow, I just wanted to clear the water with that. My wife knows she was here. She was present in the room. She knows that I used the speak and talk because, man, if, it, if all my studies, I have to use that because uh, if I don't, it would take me days to type it out. I have by no means the gift of typing. I am a one-finger typer, and it takes me forever. Wow. Anyway, just want to let you guys know that. So if you hear a rumor that they've got it in writing where I was swearing, know that it was the phone that can't understand hillbilly language. And, uh, you know, what more can I say? That's the truth. That's what happened. God be the witness. Amen. He knows. Anyway, let's press on into the topic of tonight right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. Hey, man, we're blessed about Brother Willie. He uh, is advancing into the three-hour programming. Man, we're just tickled, ecstatic for him because we've been praying that, you know, more would get out there and fill these airways with the glorious gospel, the good news of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. That, that's important to me. Now, it may not be to a lot of people, but God put it on my heart years ago when I first started doing radio and then, you know, all these brothers and sisters coming around, you know, and got interested and God was birthing radio through them. And I, I'm still ec ecstatic about it and thank God for it because that that's a, a desire in my heart to fill these airways up because we're at war and this war is real and their souls hanging in the balance. Yes, I'm not talking about against flesh and blood here, friends. I'm talking about principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm talking about there's a soul hanging in the balance. So come on, get on board. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, hey, right now, right there where you're at, get things settled between you and God. Amen. Praise God. Get it settled. I mean, hey, run to Jesus with that broken heart and a contrite spirit. Get it under the blood, my friend. My goodness. Praise God. Woo. All right. Starting to feel good. Let me tell you something. We're going to be talking about dead people don't sin. Do they? I asked the question. Love to hear your comments on it. Hey, you can call in our pre-recorded line and leave a comment. Uh, oh, I need to announce that uh, as of now, I don't have a live call-in number because it's too cold down in the office and we don't have the line run up here to my bedroom. So as a, for a while, there's no live call-in number. You cannot call in live to the program. You may continue to to use the testimony pre-recorded line for all your comments, uh, prayer requests, Bible questions, or just shout howdy, because we'd sure enough love to hear from you, my friends. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Mm, praise God. Well, you know, when I looked in the email and I seen where he'd asked the question, what did Jesus mean when he said, take up your cross and follow me? You know, and I don't know if a lot of people really sits down and thinks about, you know, about that statement, but I know that, that it, you know, that it doesn't mean, you know, uh, uh, as um, some people think it uh, means uh, to interpret cross means as some burden they must carry in their lives because we're to cast our, our cares and our burdens upon him because he cares for you and I, my friends, those of us that are born again. Listen, those of you that are walking around, running around, trying to find peace, in everything except Jesus, you'll find no peace. It's only through the blood of Christ. It's only through Jesus, my friends, that you'll find peace that is unspeakable, joy that is overwhelming, and love that is just never-ending. I'm telling you, you need Jesus worse than you need the next breath of air that you're going to take, my friends. Praise God. All right, guys, uh, let me come on down because you got to think for just a minute. If you think about the, you know, the, the cross, you know, you got to think about Jesus. Because when Jesus carried his cross up Golgotha to be crucified, no one was thinking of a cross as, a, as symbolic or, or let's say, a, a burden to carry to a, to a, um, to a prisoner in the uh, first century. The cross meant one thing and one thing only, death by the most painful and humiliating means uh, human beings could develop, my friends. I mean, 2,000 years later, Christians view the cross as a, a cherished uh, symbol of atonement, forgiveness, grace, uh, and love. But in Jesus' day, the cross represented nothing but torturous death because the, the Romans uh, forced 
convicted criminals to carry their own cross to the place of crucifixion. Bearing a cross meant carrying their own uh, execution device while facing ridicule along the way to death, my friends. Therefore, take up your cross and follow me means being willing to die in order to follow Jesus. This is called denying to self. It's a call to absolute surrender. After each time Jesus commanded cross-bearing, he said, For whosoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whosoever loses his life for me will save it. What good is it for a man to gain the whole world and yet lose, or let's say forfeit his very soul or self? Look over there in Luke chapter 9, verses 24 and 25. I mean, hey, although the call is tough, the rewards is matchless, my friends. Good to see Sister Emily in the house tonight. God bless you. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. Continue to pray for us right here at the Gospel Music Jute Box as tonight we talk about, well, dead people. Dead people don't sin, do they? Hmm. Have we died? Have we died? this day, picked up our cross and following after Jesus. We'll be right back. God bless you guys. You're awesome. to lead all his people out but Pharaoh's heart was hard and he thought he'd give them the rout so he chased them all down to the Red Sea shore he thought he wouldn't have to worry about Moses anymore but Moses stretched his rod out over the sea and the Lord answered Moses with a little gentle breeze I can see Moses now with a smile on his face telling all the people with his gentle grace I've got a feeling to fight the giant and everyone laughed at such a funny little sight a little shepherd boy armed only with a sling beside mighty Goliath seemed such a puny little thing but David said you come to me with spear and a sword but I come to you in the name of the Lord he put in a stone and he gave it a flame and when it left his hand David he began to sing the greatest story of them all Jesus was a dying and hell had a ball all the demons were rejoicing they thought they had won the war but soon they would not be laughing anymore on that first Easter morning and the sun woke up the earth the caverns of the deep opened up as to give birth to a resurrected Savior with healing in his wings and now the host of children rise and sing
right. Praise God. That is awesome, Sister Emily. We will continue to pray, but that is awesome news. We're just thanking God. Amen. As always, remember to pray for me and my family, my wife and myself. We are always, and my children, standing and just saying, hey, when you got no one else to pray for, remember Sons of Thunder Ministry. Remember the Gospel Music Jute Box and this old bishop. Yes, Lord, we do thank you for your prayers. We thank you for taking time to stop by right here at the Gospel Music Jute Box. Amen. Praise God. Hey, that reminds me, this Saturday, uh, amen, we're going to uh, Sparta, Tennessee. Be down there for a big fellowship, about uh, anywhere between 80 to 100 men. If anybody wants to go, please call and get a hold of me from right here at Crossville, Tennessee. Be leaving out Saturday morning with Brother Sam Vanderbur. We're going down there, be leaving here, uh, Crossville. Saturday morning, 7 uh, a.m. Praise God. 7 in the morning. Hey, praise God. All right, guys, it's a day. Saturday is going to be a, a, a morning of fellowship with the men down there in Sparta, Tennessee. So if you can, you want to, you get to, if you want to around here. Praise God. All right, guys, I need you to stretch your hands right toward the computer if you would. Amen. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Praise God. Yes, dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, once again, I come before you in the name of your only begotten Son, our precious Lord and Savior. And Lord, I ask that you would hide me behind the cross of Calvary, that you would blot me out with the blood of thy Son. And Lord, that as I open my mouth tonight, that your words continue to roll forth. For Lord, we know that your word will not return void. It will accomplish what you have set it forth to do. And Lord, we'll continue to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. It is in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. (laughs) Well, praise God that we do pray. Amen. Well, glory, talking about tonight, uh, the dead don't sin, do they? Now, I want you to think about, for just a minute, if you could, think about the multitudes that followed Christ. Uh, My God, they were convinced that he was going to bring a glorious kingdom to the earth. I'm talking about freeing them from the oppressive of Rome rule. Even his own disciples were thinking this way. Look in the book of Luke chapter 19, verse 11, my friends. You see, misunderstanding the prophecy, they were shocked when he began to talk about uh, uh, death to himself and, and carrying the cross. Look in Luke chapter 9, verse 22. Listen, they left him in droves. I'm telling you, people today are leaving, uh, men and women of God, leaving ministries because they stand up and speak the truth. Uh, everyone don't want the truth. Uh, everyone don't want to uh, let go of the world and the worldly ways and die and pick up their cross. Oh, no, they want to hold on to just a little bit of the world. You know, just a little bit. I need just a little bit, they say, as they justify their sins. Uh, but I ask the question, do dead men sin? Uh, can a dead man uh, sin? Uh, I ask you tonight, have you died uh, and picked up your cross and following that or Jesus? Jesus. Uh, I want you to think tonight as those crowds and the multitude were following Jesus, uh, as they begin to leave him in droves because of the teaching. Uh, uh, similar believers today misunderstand the call of Jesus uh, as the call uh, to health, wealth, and prosperity. Nothing could be further from the truth, my friends. Uh, the call of Jesus is a call to die, but today many of his followers unwilling to accept the call to die, they leave him or simply, well, they change his message to something more pleasant. It's called tickling of the ears. It's called justifying their sin. It's saying that I'm saved by grace only and I don't got to do nothing. Well, let me tell you what you do got to do. You got to repent. You've got to be, listen, you've got to repent and you must be born again. I can promise you tonight, for those of us that are born again, listen to, well, praise God. Listen tonight. If you're born again, you're a dead man because you died I said you died I said you died when you went into that uh, old watery grave in the representation of the burial, death and resurrection of our precious Lord and Savior and you took on a new a new a new creature you rose up a new creature do you understand Christ uh, dwells in you you're not your own you're bought and paid for with a price if you've been born again uh, can dead men sin well praise God God is good I'm telling 
telling you, well, glory. But his message never guaranteed, listen, a pleasant life. No, it did not. Now, we're healed by his stripes if we believe. Do you believe? I believe. But his, 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 his message never guaranteed a pleasant life. Listen, John the Baptist lost his head for standing up for the truth. My goodness, every man of God you read about died a horrific death except a couple. Do you hear me tonight? We're talking about, have you counted the cost? Are you following that or Jesus? He said, look here, come out from amongst the world because you're a peculiar people. Do you hear me tonight? I said God's people are peculiar people. Huh? But his message has never guaranteed a pleasant life. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as they obeyed God. Huh? But it wasn't pleasant to be thrown into that old fiery furnace. Do you hear me tonight? Uh, but they had a made up mind. Huh? Whether I live or whether I die, I'm not going to bow down to you, old king. Huh? Whether I live or whether I die, huh? I'm not going to bow down to the ways of this world. Huh? I'm not going to be deceived by the devices of the enemy. Because through and by the anointing of God and the word of God, I've been set free from sin. I have an armor to get dressed every day of my life. Well, praise God. And I have the word of God, the sword, that I can, well, praise God, that I can take and chase the enemy off in the name of Jesus. What did Jesus do every time the enemy come? Thus, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of of God. Do you hear me tonight, church? Can a dead man sin? Well, praise God. I know like Jesus because I'm, I know like him, he lost many because when he would share the truth, they said, this is too hard a saying. Tonight I'll lose many again. Some that call me friend, but they're not my friend. Uh, you see, they just been hanging around to pick up the crumbs that fall to the wayside. Uh, they're looking for the ones that like to get puffed up uh, and full of pride and like their ears tickled. Uh, they're looking for the ones like a dog going through the scrap. Uh, do you hear me tonight? They're looking for the ones that's not at peace with the truth uh, so they can scratch your itching ears but I'm telling you tonight uh, that the truth uh, I said the truth will make you free well praise God but if you reject Jesus then you're condemned already now I want you to look over in the book of Luke there, chapter 9, verses 57, all the way down to 62 there, because three different uh, men expressed a willingness to follow Jesus. When Jesus asked them a, a few more questions, uh, listen, he revealed that their willingness was, well, ill-considered, let's say. Well, praise God, they had not counted the cost to following him. None of them was willing to take up his cross and forsake his own interest for Christ. Uh, it seems clear that then and now, people always struggle to put their own ideal plans, uh, uh, ambitions, and desires to death and exchange them for His. We're talking about how are you picking up your cross? Well, glory! And following that or Jesus. Listen, it always ain't easy. It always ain't convenient. Uh, praise God! Uh, but I'm telling you, when you have denied yourself, picked up your cross, and follow that or Jesus, uh, you'll see souls won into the body of Christ. Uh, You'll see the blinded eyes open. You'll see the sick recover. I'm telling you, the Word of God is truth tonight. My goodness, my God is awesome. Well, praise God. We'll be right back. Look in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 57 down to 62, and you'll see what I'm talking about tonight as I deal with the question, can dead men sin? Lord, come inside and we can have a 
Praise God. As you look there in the book of Luke, chapter 9, verses 57, down to about 62 there, you see three different men expressing a willingness to follow Jesus. Uh, but we're about to find out that they hadn't counted the cost. Uh, they weren't willing to pay the cost. Have you ever wondered if you would be like these men? Consider this question. Would you still follow Jesus if it meant losing your closest friend? Would you still follow Jesus if it meant... Uh, an allegation from your family. I'm talking about when they come against you. They don't like what you got to say. They don't want to hear what you got to say. They pay you no attention at all. Come on now. They find time for everybody else, but they don't find time for you. Uh, they want to play patty cake with the devil, but when it comes to the truth, they don't want to show up. Uh, they don't want to be seen. Uh, that's why we don't get a lot of people in their chat room. They sit on the sideline and listen like a tail bearer, like somebody waiting on someone to make a mistake. But honey, they're ashamed to be seen because then they begin to be talked about and oh my God, forbid that somebody would say that you know old brother Eddie, that old bishop, uh, that old man of God from Sons of Thunder Ministry. Oh my God, God forbid that you hang out with him. He ain't nothing but trouble. Uh, he ain't gonna do nothing but get you in trouble. Do you hear me tonight? Uh, the truth is gonna stand when the world is on fire, my friends. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, I don't scratch your itch I ain't got time to play patty cake with the devil. Honey, we're running out of time and this war is real and their souls hanging in the balance. Uh, I'm telling you tonight, if you're ready for a life-changing experience, uh, give it all over to Jesus. Give it all up. Give it all up. Give it all up. You got to be willing to die. I'm talking about can a dead man sin? I'm talking about can you give it all up? Uh, can you walk away from the money? Can you? Now listen, some of you don't have to, just like Abraham when he had to lay Isaac down. Honey, God knows the intent of your heart. Uh, and I want you to know that in Deuteronomy, it's God who causes thee to get wealth. Uh, I want you to know tonight, but listen to me and listen good. Thus saith the Lord thy God. He knows your heart and and just as sure as your phony baloney, just as sure as you're trying to copy, just as sure as you ain't praying and fasting and seeking your own with God, I'm telling you tonight, this is a personal, born-again relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm telling you that if you haven't counted the cost, you will. And I'm telling you that God knows whether or not in your heart, because He knows you better than you know yourself. And if He searches the range of your heart, and He finds sin in that What's he going to do, my friend? Sin cannot be where Jesus is. Do you hear the truth tonight? Uh, can a dead man sin if you're dead? And listen, you're going to find out tonight. Uh, I'm telling you the truth right here. Would you still follow Jesus if it meant annihilation from your family? Would you still follow Jesus if it meant uh, uh, the loss of your relationship? Uh, I'm talking, would you still follow Jesus if it meant losing your job? Uh, would you still follow Jesus if it meant losing your life. Uh, I'm talking to you tonight now. 
Well, glory. The truth. The truth. These are the cost you better be counting. You better have a made up mind come hell or high water against you that you're not going to let go of that unchangeable hand of the great. Well, praise God of the great I am. I'm talking about have you got a made up mind that if you find yourself alone like we do many times preaching on the corner or preaching right here on the radio program. Oh my God. And you quit looking and you say I've got to stay focused in the word. I've got to worry about that lost soul and I've got to worry about that hungry sheep. I've got to feed the people of God and reach out to the lost. Somebody today said you're a hard man as they commented in one of the posts that I shared. They said you're a hard man brother Eddie. Uh, Why is it that you judge everyone? Let me tell you the word of God judges your life. Uh, You're either in or out. You're either on your way to heaven or on your way to hell. There ain't no in between. You've either sold out to God and you're a walking dead man. Uh Uh-huh. Yep, that's the truth. Uh, Or you're a liar because if you say you love him and you keep not his commandments, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. The reason that we preach the gospel is uh, because we love our precious Lord and Savior and he put a call in our life. Uh, Listen, it's a burn. It's like fire shut up in my bones. Uh, Do you hear me tonight? Uh, I've got to hurry and tell everybody that I can. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Jesus is coming. Where will you spend eternity? I don't want you to miss heaven. Surely not by nothing I've done or said. So I will continue to well glory to speak the truth and I will not apologize I will not back up I will not let go I will not take my hands off the plow I will stand unto death do you hear me I will stand unto my last breath uh, proclaiming this glorious gospel the good news of our precious Lord and Savior you may be a drug addict tonight but I want you to know there's hope for you you may be a tail buyer and a liar I want you to know that there's hope for you Uh, what time there's life uh, breathing through your body and the blood is pumping through your veins from your heart Uh, there's hope Uh, God's got a purpose and a plan for your life Uh, but you must uh, well praise God you've got to count the cost Uh, now listen you can have your heart's desire this night Uh, if you want the world and the worldly ways uh, if you lay your treasures uh, up here on earth you're going to have them because that's where your heart's going to be found do you hear me but I'm telling you tonight you can lay treasures up in heaven where rust and moth and man cannot corrupt. Do you hear the truth? I pray tonight to those of you that are hungry and after the truth. If you knock it shall be open unto you. If you seek you'll find. I'm telling you the days of playing games with God is coming to an end. God is bringing man's sins to the light. Do you hear me? There's no secret thing. My God, it's your sins will find you out. I'm telling you that God's not dead. He's the same yes, well glory. Yes Yesterday and today and forevermore he changes not. You must repent if you've got sin in your life. And if you repent and you've been water baptized, listen to me, you've been baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire, then honey, you died. You died in that baptism in the representation of the death, burial, and resurrection of our precious Lord and Savior. The old man went down and the new man come up, honey. You pulled off the old coat, the nature of sin. Can a dead man and sin. If you died that day uh, and Christ reigns in you, uh, I want you to know today that you will not willingly choose to continue to lie about your finances, to lie so you can get food stamps, to lie that you can hold on to a job, to lie and pacify people, tickle their ears, that you can line your pockets with money. Honey, a lie is a lie and if you're living a lie, you will miss heaven if you die in a lie. All liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Well, glory. Would you still follow Jesus even if it meant losing your life? You see, in some places in the world, actual death is a real possibility when a person becomes a Christian Christ-like. Not ashamed. Not ashamed. Do you hear me? Not ashamed to stand up and say, I've been born again. 
I'm a walking dead man. I'm not of my own. I've been bought and paid for with a price. The precious drop of blood that was shed for me on the cross of Calvary, honey. I am a dead man, for I must decrease and he must increase in me. If you have been baptized with the Spirit of God, my goodness, you're a walking dead man. Do you hear me? You need to quit leaning to your own understanding. You don't need to be led of the flesh, but allow the Spirit of God to lead you. Can a dead man sin? As you think about some places in the world, actual death is a real possibility when a person becomes a Christian. Did you know Christian is Christ-like? Are you Christ-like? When people look at you and look at your life, uh, my God, do they see a Christ-like individual? Do they see somebody that is mimicking their dear Heavenly Father? Do they see somebody that is uh, uh, who God has called them to be? Or do they just see another old Joe? Or do they just see somebody that pacifies people around them uh, to keep down arguments? Uh, do they see somebody that is wavering with their faith uh, and agree with everybody uh, so they agree with nobody? All they do is play patty cake one with another to keep down trouble. But I'll tell you right now, just as sure as you proclaim the gospel, you will have trouble in your life. Jesus said this world would be full of trouble, but I got good news. I got good news. My God, my God, my God, if you're born again, if you're a dead man and Christ lives, lives in you. I'm talking about he ain't never going to leave you nor forsake you. If they throw you in the fiery furnace like they did our brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, honey, he's going to be right there with you. If they throw you in prison, he's going to be right there with you. He ain't going to abandon you. As they take you to the chopping block like they did John the Baptist, he ain't going to leave you. He ain't going to forsake you. As the axe swings down and your head rolls off, have you counted the cost? Will you die? You see, take up your cross to follow Christ. My goodness means simply committed to the point of giving up your hopes, dreams, possession, even our very life if need be. This is the attitude, the only acceptable attitude. A true disciple, look in Luke 14, verse 27. Luke 14, verse 27 there in the Word of God. And whosoever do not bear us his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now listen, you got to know that picking up your cross simply means, uh, simply means that you are following Christ. Not flesh, not the world, not lawyers, not doctors, not some professor, not some Bible scholar, but you are being led by the Spirit of God and He will put elders around you. He will put His family, I'm talking about the body of Christ uniting together well, praise God. I'm talking about when each part is working in the anointing oil of God. I'm talking about souls being won into the body of Christ and people's lives being changed as they count the cost. Oh, my God, choose you this day, for today is the day of salvation. You see, Jesus' followers... We regard the reward as worth the price. Jesus set the example for us in his death, my friend, to give us the gift of life. For whoso, whosoever would save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Look in Matthew chapter 16, verse 25. As I ask a question, can a dead man sin? We'll be right back. This ain't no house of the blues It's a house of good news It ain't no place to break down It's a place to break through This ain't no place for doubt It's a place to sing and shout So get out of your pew Put on your dancing shoes This ain't no house of the blues Lay your burden down Hey, crank the music loud Forget about your hurts Endless house and church Cause when you 
praise goes up The glory will come down Let go of your fear and dry your tears God's gonna turn it around This ain't no house of the blues It's a house of good news It ain't no place to break down It's a place to break through This ain't no place for doubt It's a place to sing and shout So get out of your queue Put on your dancing shoes This ain't no house of the blues God, God bless each and every one of you in the chat. Good to see Sister Carolyn Adams up there helping us preach with them posts. Praise God. I love you, sis. And uh, Brother Chester Boston there. My God, brother, keep on keeping on. I love that saying. He says, I'm going to live long and live strong. Amen. The only way I know to live is to die and then let Christ live through us. Amen. You see, Jesus didn't simply call us to believe that he existed or even to believe that he can save us. He calls on us to commit our whole lives to him, to trust him alone for our salvation and then follow him as a disciple. He said, anyone who does not carry his cross and follow after me cannot be my disciple. Look into the book of Luke chapter 14, verse 27. My God, woo, God's not dead. He's alive, my friends, and he's working actively in the lives of his people. I got good news when we head out March the 19th. As we head to Kentucky, God told me to take seven changes of outfits. You know what that means for me? Well, praise God. It means something big is about to explode in the mountains of Kentucky. Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Well, glory! Hallelujah! Praise God! You see Jesus. Woo! He's in control. He's in control. Can a dead man sin? Can a dead man sin? Talking to you tonight about have you died? Have you been to the baptism hole? Have you been to the precious Lord and Savior? Have you ran to Jesus with a broken heart and a contrite spirit and said, Lord, I can't do it no more in myself? Uh, have you went and cast all your cares upon Jesus? Uh, have you surrendered all over to him? Uh, honey, just like Abraham, uh, you may be asked to lay your Isaac down. Uh, thank God he knows the intent of your heart uh, listen I'm telling you tonight uh, you may not physically die you may not physically die but you've got to be willing and ready to have you counted the cost or are you going to be like most today oh my goodness are you going to be like the others that make up excuses and begin to justify their sins uh, saying that the more they sin the more grace abounds listen to me God forbid God forbid I'm telling you that if you went to the 
Well, praise God. To the well and you drew from it, honey, you'll never thirst again. I'm telling you tonight uh, that if you've been born again, bathed in the blood, uh, I'm uh, telling you tonight, uh, the word of God says uh, you're a dead man. If Christ reigns in you, you're a dead man. Do you hear me tonight? I said, do you hear me tonight? Can a dead man sin? Uh, honey, if you've not let go of your ways, uh, if you're still trying to hold on to your will to be done, if you're still trying to figure God out. Uh, well, you in the wrong place because his ways is not our ways. Uh, you can't figure his thoughts out. Listen to me tonight. You must simply believe uh, that God loved you, that he sent. Uh, hey, listen, you're the whosoever. I'm the whosoever. If you believe tonight, uh, I'm telling you, uh, God loves you. He's got a purpose and a plan for your life, my friend. You may be shooting the needle into the corner of your eye even tonight while you're listening in the corner of the room, thinking you're hid from everybody. But the all seeing eye of God. God knows where you're at. He knows about your troubles and your trials. He's standing there with rest out arms right now, right there. Today, this very hour, this moment, this is the day of salvation. What are you going to do with Jesus? What are you going to do with the truth? You see, if Christ, is Christ the master of your life? Have you put to death your own plans and committed yourself to His will for your life? Listen, don't be satisfied with anything less. For there is no greater joy in life than following Christ every day that He blesses you to open your eyes to see the light of another day. Do dead people. Dead people don't sin, do they? We'll be right back.
Praise God. God bless you. Woo, man. I want you to think about this. I want you to think about this tonight. As we follow Jesus, hey, we start to look and act like him more and more. Yes, like him. We're to strive to be Christ-like. And as we look and act more like him, we look less like the world because we come out from amongst the world and we are a separated people. Do you hear me tonight, church? I love you. I want you to know this, that if you're listening to the program tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ, like these brothers and sisters in the room that are rejoicing and and fellowshipping one with another and encouraging each other to hold on to the unchangeable hand of the great I Am, you can know Him tonight, right there, right now, where you're at. We want to introduce Him to you. All you have to do is repent. That's all you got to do. Come to that place and realize you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Now listen, I don't lead people in prayers. I tell you to pray. I tell you to pray with all your heart. I tell you to be honest and truthful with God because He knows the thoughts of your heart. The truth will make you free. Cast your cares upon Jesus, my friend. He loves you. Now I'll pray with you, but I can't pray for you. I'll pray with you, but I can't pray for you. This is something your mama can't do, your daddy can't do, your neighbor can't do. I'm talking about this is a moment... Right now, between you and Jesus. You see, the only way you can get to the Father is through and by the Son. Right now, won't you have that little talk with Jesus? Well, glory. I'm telling you, if you'll go to him with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, my friend, he will in no wise cast you out. It don't matter right now. If you're living in a homosexual lifestyle, you can be set free. Maybe maybe right now you're drunk with alcohol. Maybe you're an alcoholic. Uh, honey, there's deliverance and his name is Jesus. Maybe right now you're a child molester listening as, as you have bothered children. But I'm telling you, there's hope for you right now, right there where you're at. If you will cry out to Jesus, repent from your sins, come out and do them no more because a dead man can't sin. Did you hear me? Well, praise God, the moment that you're born again, the moment that you surrender your will over, that his will be done in your life. Life. Uh, the moment that you accounted the cost uh, and you pick up the cross and follow out of Jesus, uh, he'll make you fishers of men because who? He dwells in you. Do you hear the word of God? Well, praise God. Well, praise be to the Lamb. Well, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Today is the day of salvation. Don't reject him. If you reject him, you're condemned already. If you meet death without Jesus Christ, you will lift your eyes in torment, my friend, where the worm dieth not separated from God for eternity. Please don't reject Jesus. Please get things settled between you and God. Well, praise God. Well, glory. God's good. Amen. Amen. Guys, we love you. We'll be right back just in a second. Amen. Be blessed. Be blessed. Crowd that day at Jairus' home When the doctor shook his head and said She's gone You could feel the mother's heartbreak You could hear them cry and mourn Their little girl was only 12 years old But somewhere in the distance How the line against the sun From the throne Well they said look somebody's coming But what they did not know It was the promise Coming down that dusty road Just leave me and then 
Praise the Lord. Amen. God is awesome, I'm telling you. Hey, I'm getting ready to share a testimony or two with you. Amen. But I want you to know, if this program's blessed you in any way, we'd love to hear from you. Would you write us a letter? Uh, let's see. You know, how many would take the time to sit down and just write a letter and say thank you for what you're doing? Thank you to the ones that work behind the scenes, those that help hook up the internets, those that help re refix all my computer. I got a my son, uh, Dwayne. He's he's my go to computer guy, man. Hey, I tell you what, do you pray about it? Those of you that like to help people, we do Project Reach Out right here from the Gospel Music jukebox radio program it's simply where we reach out and help others hey why don't you sit down write a letter pray and if god tell you to send a dollar a quarter a dime it don't matter but i have to give you an opportunity to sow into the kingdom of god i have to do that because now i'm a full-time minister amen full-time in the radio and revival and raising up a uh my goodness a worship center and an outreach uh center uh my god I, I don't work a public job uh my goodness i don't draw disability don't draw unemployment you see god told me to walk away from the world and the worldly ways for me and the call that he placed on my life to go forth and allow the body of christ his people the opportunity to sow into this work this is a god move going forth not a man move i don't got no money he can't be me i can't pay for it if the people of god don't obey god then It'll get shut down. We're taking it day by day. So you pray tonight. Those of you that listen, if you're blessed and you're, you're being fed through the gospel music jukebox, you pray whether or not to sow into this ministry. You obey God first and foremost. If God, listen, we're not after your money. Uh-uh, no, we're after your help to spread the gospel. Let's take this gospel, share it with your friends and your family. But on the other hand, we also have to offer you an opportunity to sow into the garden of God. I'm talking about if you see the fruit of God. If you feel the anointing, then sow into good ground. You pray, whatever it is, we're going to thank God for it. When we receive those letters, we're going to anoint them with oil, and we're going to pray. Yes, a hundredfold return harvest on that, because that's the word of God. I'm telling you today, church, I need the body of Christ. I need you. I need you. Those of you that are called and ordained by God, I need you to simply obey God. Amen. You obey God. You obey God. Whether he said sing, preach, talk, or text, uh, my God, run or climb the sycamore tree. But obey God first and foremost in your life. But if you got nowhere that you're faithfully sowing to or you're tithing to, Put us on the prayer block there. Pray about us. We need your prayers and your financial support to keep the gospel music jukebox going, to keep Project Outreach going. Hey, listen, I've got to get to these revivals, and you can help send me. You pray about it. You obey God. We'll be right back. 
Praise God. We're going to share some awesome testimonies tonight. Woo, praise God. Because God's not dead, my friend. He's alive, and he is working actively in the lives of his children. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Well, glory. <laughs> well, praise God. I'm about to have me a Holy Ghost hoedown right here. Well, Jesus is with me when the storm clouds together. He's standing by my side when I hear the thunder roll. And he holds my hand when I begin to tremble. When the winds of this world is blowing strong. I know that Jesus is with me when the storm Sing it one more time. I know that Jesus is with me. 
Just because it's Monday night Just because it's the first night I can't meet the second song That we gotta stand here and can't praise God Nobody ever said you gotta wait till Thursday night or Friday night to shout Nobody ever said you gotta wait till Friday night to praise the Lord Now listen Rule and part brother Greg Luce I don't believe in singing for an hour and a half And then letting the preacher up That's rude So we're going to sing for a few more minutes. And if you came to praise the Lord tonight, I want you to put your hands together. And let God know that you love Him here tonight. Wait for it! Praise God. Amen. Hey, if we've been a blessing to you, we'd love to hear from you. You can write us at Bishop Eddie Cheney, 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. Once again, that's Bishop Eddie Cheney, 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571 is the zip. If you're writing from out of the country, just put USA right there at the end of the zip code. May God continue to bless you. We're going to share a few testimonies and uh, got a few more announcements I'd like to make here just in a little bit. If you can hang out with us, that would be great. If not, we understand. We want you to obey God first and foremost in your life. We are excited about March the 19th. Uh, I like what uh, uh, Brother uh, Boston there po posted earlier there, uh, Brother Chester. Uh, uh, posted. He said, God's got something good for him. He does. God's got something good for all of us, each and every one, because, well, if we just would reach out and take a hold of it, if we deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow after Jesus. Hey, if anybody listens to the archive tonight and you want to go to uh, Kentucky March the 19th, please message my wife or sister Carolyn there and let them know that you're going. They're trying to get a head count of how many's coming uh, from out of Tennessee down there. They're taking care of the food and all that kind of stuff. We're going to eat. We're going to have to repent, no doubt about it. Hey, there's Brother Urban Taylor in the room. God bless you my friend amen praise god uh i believe he said he was going earlier if he could seemed like didn't you brother Irvin? was you going march the 19th uh down to kentucky there at brother donnie sloan's the singing the day of fellowship and uh we're just gonna see what god's got for us up in that part of the country amen praise god uh so but please everybody pray those that said they were gonna go and wanted to go you need to let uh sister carolyn adams there know or my wife if you're gonna get to make it or not uh, at least within a couple of days before we go so we can decide you know which vehicles to take and all that because now where i don't work i really got to pay attention to god because of the gas and things like that i've really got to discern it and and be led of the spirit so help me by you obeying god and you pray through and if you're going we just simply love to hear from you amen and get a get a count of how many we're going to be hauling up in that part of the country now me personally i'm not going to be coming back i'm going to be staying the lord told me to take seven changes of outfits so anyway i'm going to obey god and I encourage everyone else to do the same concerning March the 19th up there in the mountains of Kentucky. Amen. We're looking so 
we're just looking so forward to that as brother Donnie Sloan one of man he has just become one of one of my mentors in the music the gospel music and a great friend and brother in the Lord um, pray pray for me the devil told me the other day that somebody had been packing tails to him and that's why I've not seen him in the the chat rooms and stuff but i know that he's grown enough in god that he knows the truth when he hears it and and he'll take me before the lord amen i <laughs> praise god that's what i encourage each and every one of you to do if you ever hear something on me and uh, ask me and take it before the lord god will tell you all about me because i'm not of my own i belong unto him if there's something you want to know about me ask me if i've done it i'll tell you because i've repented of my sins been forgiven i'm blood bought Woo! Praise God. I've counted the cost. You're listening to a walking dead man. I'm not of my own. I'm bought and paid for with a price. That precious drop of blood there on the cross at Calvary. Amen. All right, guys. Know that we love you. Give this a listen and be blessed. And we'll be right back. The Bible tells us to pray for our enemies. And, um, you know, a lot of times we don't know how to handle a situation maybe when somebody's picking at us or doing us wrong and uh, Daniel I guess had some of the worst enemies in the Bible and um, uh, he prayed to the Lord three times a day and God even brought him out of a den of lions I praise God for that witness and so God's able to pull us out and cause peace it'd be better if our enemies would uh, make amends and do right than to be eaten by lions, of course. But God's able to do that. And so we're not the kind that's supposed, as Christians, to get even or try to make things worse. God forgive us. We're in the flesh. We're not perfect. And may God help us to be more praying people. And uh, you can't help but remember when Jesus was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There's been times, I guess, we didn't know what we were doing, and sometimes we run into people, they don't know what they're doing, and uh, maybe don't treat us as kind as they ought to. May God bless those people and, and help them to see the light. Forgive us, Lord. Uh, keep us from temptation. Deliver us from evil. This is Brother Wendell Judkins. May you have a blessed day in the Lord. If God took a little walk up your house And slipped on down the mine Would he find us busy with the things of the world Or be happy with what he did find If he tiptoed up our front doorstep And entered without Would he find us mumbling and grumbling Or be pleased with what he had found Oh, but God's not slipping around And he's not tiptoeing in He's here all the time He's yours and he's mine He's watching and waiting
Jason's brother Boyd, London, in Idaho. We love you all. We're praying for you, and God bless you. I was going to call in and read a great scripture here and talk about what it means when Jesus says that we have to take up our cross and follow him. Uh, here it says, the cost of discipleship, this is in Luke 9, 23, and he said to them all, if anyone, so if anyone, any person, you, me, anyone, desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? For whoever is ashamed of me and my work, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and of the fathers and of the holy angels. He's saying that to take up our cross means to deny ourselves. We have to we have to take up our cross and deny ourselves daily and follow Jesus, he says. What would we have to deny ourselves of? I guess one of the main things would be a sin. Deny ourselves of sin. Jesus told us told people to repent or perish. So the homosexuality, pornography, drunkenness, drug use, sins, we've got to deny ourselves of those sins. We'd have to deny ourselves of our own time, of our own life, giving up our own pursuits, even after maybe money and jobs and different things that we might want to pursue to spend time in the ministry doing what Jesus wanted us to do, denying ourselves, taking up our cross daily and following him, losing our life for him and the gospel. He says if we keep our lives for ourselves, we'll lose it. Now, as far as, far as follow me, he talks more about this over here in the uh, a little bit farther over. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. I believe he's saying he didn't have a house because he went from town to town and village and village and preached the kingdom of God to people and healed people, prayed for people. Then he said to another, follow me. See, here it is, follow me. What does follow me mean? Me mean? Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another said, Lord, I will follow you, but first let me go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. So I believe truly following Jesus and denying ourselves from the gospel, part of it, a big part of it is preaching the kingdom of God. Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and you go and preach the kingdom of God. So we've got to go out to a lost, dying world. Go preach the gospel to all creation. Lay our hands on the sick, and they shall recover, Jesus told us. You go make disciples of all nations, teach them to obey everything, and baptize them. So we've got to deny ourselves and lose our life for him the gospel and get out there and preach the kingdom of God to others and win souls for Jesus and become fishers of men. And we've got to deny ourselves and do that and deny our sin also. So let's deny ourselves for Jesus and take up our cross and go preach Jesus to the world and live the way he wants us to live. God bless all. Amen. Thank you, Brother Boyd and Wendell Judkins. Brother Wendell Judkins uh, down here out of uh, McMinnville, Tennessee, I believe it is. And then, of course, Brother Boyd out of Idaho. Praise God. We thank both of you gentlemen for utilizing that testimony line. Hey, guys, know that you, too, can call in, leave a prayer request, uh, share a testimony, or just shout howdy. We'd sure love to hear from you. Amen. We are so blessed that we've got... Uh, uh, well, brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, amen. I seen a post earlier wondering where everybody was. Please uh, know that <laughs> just like if we get you a number about everybody that says they're going to be there, well, the truth is probably somebody will get mad at me over preaching a truth that they don't like, and they probably won't go. That's sad, but it's the truth. And I, you know, I don't like to, I just give you estimations. We like to say around here, you get to if you want to. I hope even the ones that get mad at me for preaching the truth, that they would obey God and come anyway. Uh, I, I know right now in my life, uh, we, we're praying that Brother Greg Dotson would, would show up down there and bring forth a powerful anointing word of God. I don't know, Sister Karen, if you've got to hear uh, Brother Greg preach or not. He does a radio program, Camp Meeting Radio. Now, these times he misunderstands what I preach and gets upset at me, but we still love him to death, and, and he loves me. He is a powerful anointed man of God, and if you get a chance, you want to go listen to his archives. And uh, I don't remember the name of the program when he actually ministered himself and brought and break the word of God. But man, I'm telling you, 
pray in agreement that God put it on his heart and that he shows up down there and obeys God. Because if he does, I'm telling you, like myself, I'm going to obey God. And I'm sure if Brother Urban Taylor goes, he's going to obey God. Most of these men of God that I know, they are led by the Spirit of God. And they will come and obey God with song and word and testimony. They will obey God. And I know Brother Donnie, man, already anointed fingers, I call him, and the wonderful uh, friends that we met that come down out of Louisville, Kentucky. My God, I can't wait. I mean, I, I get stirred just watching the videos. I watch those old videos once a day. Uh, just to, I, It just blesses the socks right off my feet, man. <laughs> I can't help it, uh, you know, to hear that anointing ringing forth in that music. And uh, my goodness, as uh, I believe it's Debbie Young, as she sung, man, a voice of an angel. I'm telling you, God absolutely restoring and putting together an awesome anointing. And we're just, we're looking for souls to be one there. Uh, you know, like I said, God told me to bring seven changes of outfits. So that I know what that usually means for me. But you continue to pray for us. We'll continue to pray for you guys. We're excited about it. But I do need every born again believer that believes to pray for Sons of Thunder ministry. We need labors. We need help. I, I mean, right now it's just me and my wife. And, uh, um, you know, I've got a, a child or two that's trying to help out. I've got a lot of things to get done ministry-wise as Project Reach Out. Uh, some of you don't know what that's about. You can check out a lot of her videos and pictures there on our Facebook page, Bishop Eddie Cheney, and you'll see a lot of things that we get to go and do. We actually go look under bridges, and, and when somebody tells us a situation of a homeless person, we try to go find them, see what we can do. Right now, we're very limited as money we don't have none but uh we've got you know food and things like that and i always bring them to my house i don't have a a building built but i've got a house so i bring them to my house and we let them get a bath we keep them a night or two and try to see what we can do to help them get back on their feet you know it's not about keeping them or babysitting them we don't do that now what we do we preach the gospel share the word of god with them both naturally and and spiritually and then we try to help them get on their own now sometimes you got to know people get mad when you tell them hey look you got to get your own place you got to become a man or a woman uh, of god for your own in other words we do expect people to keep their word and be men and women of their word around us and i'll call you on it if you don't in front of me i surely will if you say you're going to do something for the kingdom of god then go do that go do just that if if you say that you're going to work in a ministry, then roll up your sleeves and go to work in it. And, uh, you know, you don't, you get in part. So don't try to figure God out. Just go be obedient. Just be obedient. But uh, I do need uh, uh, financial support. I need prayers. I need men and women of God that don't care to run and spend all night out in these old highways uh, hunting for those that we may be able to give a blanket to or a, a night of shelter to. We do do that. We're going to continue to do that. Nothing's changed for us. Uh, we've always been doing it way before we worked with any other ministries, but we will continue to work with other ministries um, as God allows and God puts in place. Hey, we're servants, and we just want to simply help uh in the spreading of the gospel of the good news of our precious Lord and Savior. We try to promote other ministries through a program called The Pulpit. You want to check that out in our archives. We try to share that uh, when as much as I can. Right now, I've not been able to a lot because we've been working on the new studio and trying to get things in order so we could receive a guest or two, things like that. A lot of manual work going on, and then I have to find my two hours a day to read and you know get into my study to be able to come and break the bread to to stay with that fresh anointing to reach out to the lost and feed the sheep uh we're a ministry that is is doing both we're not only ministering to the saved but we are reaching out for the lost the the crippled the blind the lame the drug infested the alcoholic the homosexuals the lesbians we want you to know if you're living in those lifestyles of sin you're welcome here this is a house of refuge it belongs unto god we will love the hellish ways right out of you you either get in or you'll leave mad most of them leave mad at me because they say i'm too hard a man I, i'm I, i'm no harder than jesus i love you enough that i'm going to tell you the truth that's the bottom line to what we do we encourage you by sharing the truth i fear god i'm afraid not to tell people the truth oh you better believe there's times in my life 
my wife will tell you, she'll witness this. When God's got ready to move on me in, in a strange uh, ministry or a strange place, I'm like, please, Lord, you know, they're, they're going to throw me out. They're going to crucify me. And he said, uh, you pray for them, for they know not what they do. That's what they've done to me. Don't count it strange when you're persecuted for the gospel's sake falsely. You raise your hands up and count it joy, my friends. We're running out of time. And there is souls hanging in the balance. We must continue to reach out. It doesn't matter whether or not I got a baloney sandwich in the refrigerator. What matters is whether or not we are doing what God has called us to do. There'll be time to eat. There'll be time to sit down and eat a dinner. Uh, but while it is light, we must be at work for the kingdom of God. Remember tonight that we love you and we're praying for you. We pray that God continue to bless you and your family as you continue to bless others, my friend. Always pray about all things, be ancient about nothing, and obey God. So you take this ministry, Sons of Thunder ministry, before God, and you see, if God wants you to sow, whether it be money, time, clothing, food, uh, hey, uh, we just want to encourage you to obey God. Amen. Now you can write us at 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. Also, Brother Chester Boston, did I understand that you lived up in Louisville, I think it is, or by Louisville, Kentucky? Man, I'd love if, if uh, you could PM me your phone number, some way I could get a hold of you. Right here in the next couple of months, I'm going to be up in that area. I'd love to get to meet you, stop by and fellowship, maybe eat a good bologna sandwich with you, pray with you, have you pray for us, and uh, just... Uh, well, just get to meet another brother as I'm out there on the highways. But I will be up in Louisville, I think it's toward the end of April. But anyway, um, just, uh, you know, if you want to do that, you get to. If you don't to, if you don't, well, just continue to pray for me. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> a lot of people don't realize what it, what it is when they meet me. We ask you to just obey God. We want to come in. We will be up in the Frankfort, Kentucky area. Uh, in revival coming soon but anyway just pray and obey the lord just pray and obey the lord all right greensboro all right brother well i may be through there if you want to share that information with me you can pm me uh there on facebook uh, i'd love to have it if i'm in the area close enough i'd sure enough like to get to uh, meet you in person and uh, just fellowship and break bread amen i i love that you got to know me i don't I don't take, I have a lot of people try, uh, yeah, 219 Red Fox Drive, yes, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571 is the zip code. Uh, we'd appreciate a letter. Man, we get letters from Germany. I've got letters from uh, Africa, letters from Germany. Man, we're getting them from all over the world. Hey, you guys got to know that this broadcast goes out to over 16 countries now. That's pretty awesome. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's just awesome to what God's doing. And, and, and I know that locally people get mad at me a lot. You'll see the numbers go up and down in the chat room because a lot of times when people, including myself, when I hear a man of God preach over the years and it hit me, I had to deal with it. And sometimes that takes, you know, immediately or a day or two. We encourage you to do it immediately. Because death could find us in the next heartbeat. But some people has to pray and, you know, think about it and study and read. And it takes a day or two. And, you know, they kind of, they're not really angry at you, but yet they got to discern it out. So let's give everybody room to work out their own. Yes, their own soul salvation with fear and tremble before God. If they're not in the room, we simply pray that um, they're out doing something for the glory of God. We pray that God's got them somewhere doing something to help somebody realize that there is a way of escape out of that lake of hell, that fire that burns forever and eternity. Do you hear me? So pray one for another. Encourage one another with good words, the truth. Now, sometimes the truth will, will hurt, but it will always make you free. Know that we love you. We hope to hear from you soon. I mean, think about it. You probably never sat down and wrote a letter to a ministry before. You probably not used to ministries asking you to do that. But now God told me to start giving people an opportunity. Yes, he did. And that's why I must do it. 
That's why I must do it. This is not a comfortable part for me. I've been blessed to work 36 years all my life as an adult and take care of the ministry and my home. But God told me I couldn't do that. I had to let him do this, that the ones that are lost and undone are watching, and they needed to see God move in this ministry, not Eddie Cheney. So please pray for me that I stay in the center of God's will for me and this ministry. Because we love you, and we love the Lord. Amen. So God bless you, friends. We're going to say good night with this song. And know that we love you. Now listen, if you'd like to call me, uh, if you got any questions or any comments, and you'd like to talk to me, please feel free to do that. You can reach me on my cell phone right now. I don't have a live telephone calling number other than my cell phone. If you'd like us to pray with you live, we consider that an honor and a privilege to pray with you and for you, my friend. You just simply dial 1-931-248-0730. That is my personal cell phone number that God provided through a, a sister uh, that said God told her to do that that we needed that prayer phone and it needed to be kept on me. So please, if you need to get a hold of me concerning prayer or ministry question, Bible question, or talk to me, then do that. If not, feel free to leave your prayer request right here in the chat room. We print those out and pray over them. And hey, remember, share with everybody, Monday through Friday, Lord of willing, we're on every day, twice a day, 9.30 a.m. in the morning, so I don't send out postcodes. This thing ain't letting me share. So you can just go right on into your speaker app. You can download that. You can uh, follow me over there on speaker, and it'll send you an email, let you know we're on the air. I do try to post, but not all the time will it let me. So please share that information and, uh, you know, uh, uh, that we're on twice a day, Lord's a willing, Monday through Friday. Now, weekends, I'm going to be on the road. And it's looking like after uh, pretty soon here in a, a couple of weeks, I'm going to be on the road every weekend pretty steady for a while. So uh, <laughs> praise God. He's sending us out there. We're excited about that. Uh, now, what we do when we're on the road, we'll be taking audio and video and pictures, and we'll record as much as we can, and we'll be sharing those updates throughout the week, Monday through Friday. is what we feel in our heart to do. Uh, 9.30 a.m. Central Time of the morning, we're on the air. Then we come back on the air live again at 7 p.m. Central Time, right here at the Gospel Music Jude Box. So if you can, tell everybody. I appreciate it if you'd inform your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, your family, anybody you want and feel led of God to you know, come on in. Help us pray. We need prayer warriors in these chat rooms. We need people to fellowship one with another. And I definitely need your prayers. Amen. As I deal with hundreds of emails and private PMs and negative and good, more negative than good right now. But that's who we're trying to reach. Those ones that that are, are attacking God's people, uh, attacking ministries, uh, packing tales and spreading rumors and lies. We need to try to reach them. Uh, we got to continue to pray that God open their eyes because we're running out of time and uh, their souls hanging in the balance. We're looking so forward to going over and staying all night with Sister Shirley up there. Uh, I think I'll get to stay a night with uh, Sister Carolyn too. I can't wait to get to meet her mom. Can't wait to get to meet your husband, Sister Carolyn, your whole family. I, we're just blessed. Uh, man, I, I, Brother Donnie ain't going to know what to do with me. I'm going to hug his neck and Sister Chandra. They're going to think I'm super glued on them, man. Uh, <laughs> praise God. I miss them. Hey, I miss Brother Donnie now, I'm telling you, and and Sister Sandra. But Brother Donnie, I, I miss him. But uh, we just love all you guys. And Hey, Sister Rachel and Pastor Jordan. You wait. I got something I'm giving them when I get up there. And my goodness, my goodness. I ain't telling. I'm not telling. I ain't telling it. It, it Y'all will see. That's all I can say. But know that I love you. May God continue to bless each one of you. Once again, if you wish to write us, we sure would like to have them hanging here on our wall. Uh, words of encouragement. I look to them. I draw off of them uh, to read those prayers and, and words that people are encouraging us to go on. My goodness, just simply write us right here at 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. Once again, that's 219 Red Fox Drive, Crossville, Tennessee, 38571. 
You can put Bishop Eddie Cheney or you can put the Gospel Music Jukebox at 219 Red Fox Drive. Either one works. It'll get right here to us. We'd love to hear from you. Remember, if you're riding out of country, you just put USA on the end of it. And uh, remember, now we're giving away Bible study CDs. Uh, we still got music CDs we're giving away. Uh, I'm finishing some of them up tonight. Uh, so if you want those mailed to you once a month, our, our Bible, our new Bible study CD that we mail out once a month, just simply PM me your mailing information over there on Facebook. Um, that way you don't share it with the whole world. Go to Bishop Eddie Cheney on Facebook. You'll see all the links for the Gospel Music Jukebox. Just PM me your mailing address, and please allow seven or so weeks for us to get that out in the mail because we're limited on help. But <laughs> but we'll get it out to you, and then you should start receiving it once a month. So God bless you. Continue to pray for us as we pray for you. We love you guys. We'll see you next time right here at the Gospel Music Jukebox. Till then, hey, Keep up the good fight, my friend. I have been such a long One I thought would never end No matter where I go Oh, and it's a long ride Just to get by But I've learned a lot along the way And I found I've learned how to fight a good fight of faith. A good fight of faith. There's nothing left to bring me down. Nothing standing in my way. You just can't take what I. I'll never be again That's one thing that I know Oh, cause it's a hard ride Just to get by And I thank God He's made a way To bring me peace of mind I learned how to fight a good fight of faith. A good fight of faith. There's nothing left to bring me down. Nothing standing in my way. Just can't take what I.
good fight.